Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming to this amazing panel called Celebrating Tower Hills Past, Present, and Future. My name is Ashley Altshuler, class of 1990. I'm the class, I guess I should say I'm the president of the Alumni Council of Tower Hill School. It's an honor to serve in this role. I've done it for about four years. And there's many different council members here today. We're co-sponsoring this panel because of the ward presentation, something that the council likes to put on year after year. And uh, I'm very grateful for my fellow members of this council who do so much for Tower Hill, including homecoming, senior speech and senior dinner, as well as career day, which is something that's very important to all of us here at Tower Hill School. So on behalf of the council, I'm here as their proxy representative to bestow upon our two very distinguished award recipients who unfortunately are behind me, so bear with me, uh, Mona and Alex, and we'll get into more introduction about them in a minute. So uh, I'm very proud to be a lifer at Tower Hill, having graduated here in 1990, and I have to say, Betsy, before my remarks today, I took a look and thought about the amount of time the all children family, including my sister and her son, have been at Tower Hill, and it's a collective to the T, 50 years. Wow. Amazing, I, could, I never could have matted that up. Uh, but I do hope to one day look back and say that it's 100 years, because it's very much a fabric of my life and who I am today, and hopefully the success that I will continue to have, as well as my children. I have three at Tower Hill now, who are in fifth, uh, seventh, and third grade, and my lovely Lily is here to lead the charge, so thank you, Lily, for coming, it's a big deal. So without further ado, I'd like to go forward and present the award. So the first award is called the Tower Hill School Young Alumni Award. This recognizes an alumnus or alumna who graduated within the last 25 years and who exemplifies the qualities of a Tower Hill graduate, has distinguished themselves among their peers, and has been involved with the school through volunteer work, contributions, or in other ways. This year, Tower Hill is very pleased to recognize Dr. Mona Gizgani Gillen, alumna of the class of 2001, and parent of Kaylin Gillen of the class of 2032 <laughs> with this special honor. So, uh, Dr. Yazdani, she graduated in 2001, which was an amazing feat with a, and has a BA now from the University of Pennsylvania, which is quite a school. She majored in biology and a minor in history and sociology and science. She went on to earn her MD from Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia, which I'm very fond of because I was born there, <laughs> as well as where my father went and did his school and residency, so there's a connection already. And she was on the Hobart Armory Hair Honor Society and graduated with cum laude honors, quite a feat at such a distinguished school. In 2015, she completed her residency in urology at the GW, George Washington University Hospital of DC, and went on to do a fellowship in minimally invasive urology at UPenn, where she went on to do specialize in robotics and female urology. Now, Dr. Yazdani is now a urologic surgeon practicing with Brandywine Urology Consultants here in Delaware, and holds the special distinction of being the first female urologist in Newcastle County, Delaware. So we think that's quite impressive. <laughs> and as you can imagine, as a result of that fine resume and experience that uh, Dr. Yasoni is a favorite, above all, at Tower Hill's Career Day, which is an alumni council event. And we thank you for coming back every time. Including, um, she, she lives here in Wilmington, residing with her son, her husband Peter, and their two children, Kaylin, who's a THS, and her daughter Isla. She also serves as the parent grade captain for the kindergarten class for the Alumni Annual Fund, and we're very grateful for that, for keeping up with the Annual Fund. So please, without further ado, please welcome me in joining and offering this wonderful award to Dr. Rona Yasani. Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you Beth, for that wonderful introduction. Um, when I walked back into Tower Hill two years ago on my son Kalen's first day at Tower as a Tower taught, every memory I had as a, of my 13 years as a student here flooded in my brain. This blanket of support, care, and enthusiasm, friendship, camaraderie, once again placed over my shoulders, and I always know that the friends, the teachers, and the community of Tower Hill is with me. Uh, for a young child and teen, having that kind of security blanket, if you will, allowed me to take chances and molded me into who I am today. Before I say anything more, I just want to say how grateful I am to be receiving this award this year. I say this because when I think of my peers at Tower Hill, I think of some pretty inspiring, hardworking people who are doing the most innovative things. To be recognized among them is really humbling. Uh, Tower Hill has given us so many opportunities. I'm grateful to my parents for having the foresight and for working hard to get my brother Samir and I this education. I've been so fortunate to be part of this community as a student, alum, and now as a parent. As a student, I squeezed every last bit out of Tower Hill that I could, including education, sports, extracurriculars. I did not realize at the time how lucky I was to be in an environment that was supportive, that praised being curious and nerdy, and had what I believe are the best teachers with more knowledge, school spirit, and devotion than any others. Being in this atmosphere allowed me to learn who I was at a young age, so I went off to college, I was confident and sure of who I was, the values I believed in, um, and the person I wanted to become. Without this, I do not know if I would have made it through the hardest parts of my education. At times of struggle at Penn, med school, or residency, I would hear the words of many of my Tower Hill teachers. Ms. Rich on the rice paddy, telling us to run faster or listen harder. Mr. Bacher in the mornings urging us all to be a little better people today than we were before, sorry, the day before. Mr. Marshall on a trip to the jungle in Costa Rica teaching us how to rely on ourselves and be independent. Ms. Zettinger reminding me of when I got my first bad grade in fourth grade to be easy on myself and to come up with a new strategy for the next time. I mean, I even asked Mr. Robinson yesterday for advice on this speech. <laughs> there are only a few of the lessons of the life, sorry, these are only a few of the life lessons I took with me. I could go on all day with examples like this, and I was asked not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and through all of those years of learning together, we also made lifelong friends who are no more, sorry, who are now more like family. These friends Tower Hill gave me have shaped me into who I am and continue to stand by me through every part of my life. After all I've received from Tower Hill, I'm really happy to be able to give back now as a mother as an, and as an alum. I don't have words to explain how wonderful it is for my husband, Peter, um, and I to bring our kids, Kaylin, who's in kindergarten, and Isla, who's only two, into this community. I'm so excited for everything that has remained the same, tree trend, field day, and all that is evolving. The technology, the curriculum, the diversity. I appreciate the many Tower Hill parents I've met as well, who are working just as hard to give their kids every opportunity and to raise kids in the motto of also been effective. I look forward to giving my time and ideas to continue the evolution and to also maintain the traditions that make Tower Hill a place that I love. I look forward to all the memories and the opportunities that I now have as, an, a, parent, as a parent. This, is a, this award is a reminder to me of that feeling I had when I returned through the front doors, and I'm so grateful for all of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mona. I, I found most powerful in your remarks the commentary about the teachers, all, many of which are back here today, and all of which you taught me, and also our, uh, the joint headmaster we had together, Mr. Gould, and came back for this. It means a lot to, to have that kind of influence in our lives, so I echo your comments, and very grateful for you to come back and do this today. So, next up with our award is called the Tower Hill Distinguished Alumni Award. This award recognizes an alumnus or alumna who exemplifies the qualities of a Tower Hill graduate, has distinguished themselves among their peers, and has been involved with the school through volunteer work, contributions, or in other ways. This year, the Alumni Council is very pleased and very proud to bestow this award on a good friend and an amazing Tower Hiller, Alex Wise, class of 1964. Let me say the next things that happened first. 
So Alex, you are in good company, and it is quite an honor because the award recipient last year from the Alumni Council is in the audience today. Uh, you may not be able to see him up there, but Governor Mike Castle received it last year at the, uh, the last year's event. And we're so grateful that Congressman Castle could be here today to watch good friend Alex Wise receive the award. So welcome back, Governor. who is a dear friend of my family for many years. Uh, Alex came to Tower Hill, I didn't know he had roots this deep, when he was at the age of four, and he did not attend Tower Hill between ninth and 12th grades because he went to Choke boarding school. But at the time, that was very common. Now it's not as common. But his, his, his uh, distinguished treatment and fulfillment of the goals of Tower Hill run really deep and he has the deepest roots because uh, he has served as the class agent for the alumni fund, for his class, for over 50 years for the annual fund. And that's quite a remarkable feat, so we're very grateful for all that time and energy towards Tower Hill. Now, after Alex graduated from Tower Hill in 19, class of 1964, he went on to the University of Delaware, where he served in the ROTC unit. And I found this very impressive because by his senior year, he was in second in command to a brigade of over 1,250 cadets. And he has the distinction of being the leading scorer in lacrosse at the University of Delaware for three consecutive years, and the only Delaware native to do it once in the last 50 years. So that's quite a feat. Now, six months after Alex graduated from UD in 1969, he was deployed to Vietnam, where fortunately for all of us in this room, including his children, he came back unscathed, which means a lot, because I'm also a product of a Vietnam vet. Uh, a lot of us would not be standing in the room were it not for your service, but also your safe return. So thank you for your service to our country. Alex served as a trustee of Tower Hill from 1981 through 1993. He was secretary, he was treasurer, as well as the chair of the finance long-range planning committees. And he was the inaugural chair of the personnel committee. Now, Alex and his wife Wendy, who is class of 1968 Tower Hill, are the proud parents of Hiller's uh, Lindsay Wise Condries, who's here today, class of 1996, Jennifer Gaddy Smoko, class of 1993, and grandparents of four, two of whom are also Hillers, the other two get a hall pass because it would be a 3,000 mile commute from San Francisco. <laughs> so this to me was a special work because as I said, we're the all children of the Wises go back many years. Uh, my, my late father was, was dear friends with the Wises and my father would have loved to have been here today and watched you receive this award, so I have to say that. But also, so Alex took a special paternal move and instinct on me that I will never forget. When I came back to Delaware after graduating from, uh, from law school and Trinity College, Alex took a, 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 a happy desire to say, hey, Ash, that squash game's pretty pathetic, but it could be good because he was a state champ and, and many other championships. And he took me under his wing for a full year while I was clerking for the Supreme Court here in Delaware. And every week would call me or email and write and say, Ash, let's get on the court. And he really, in one year, up my game dramatically. It'll never be the class that he was. But when I went to New York City, Alex, I was able to play among the ranks of some of the toughest players up there because you spent the time in tutelage during that year. And I was always grateful for that. I always think the world of you for that. But it just shows how deep the Hiller roots do run in this community. So without further ado, I'd like to please have Alex come up and receive the award for the Distinguished Alumni Council. Class of 1964. Best you can come up for a photo. The recipient will be the winner here. Okay. Straight ahead, Alex. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, Alex may want to say a few words, but speaking on his behalf today, since it's much easier, is going to be Wendy. She'll come on up. Wendy, come on up, please. Okay. 
Again, thank you to the alumni board for, for this award. Um, I'm not one to at least talk about myself, so I'm not. Um, the, this is an incredible school. I think again, I started here in 1950, 1950 when the preschool was out where the football field is today, if you don't know that. And then worked my way up and out and went off the boarding school, came back, et cetera, et cetera. But it's always been about the town of Hill. And now uh, I'll turn this over to my wife. And yeah. She's going to do the rest. Um, I'm going to finish his speech because um, he has, he's visually impaired. I and our family have been very fortunate to have been involved in Tower Hill for a very long time, going back to my, my mother's graduation in 1937. So we have been bleeding green and white for four generations. When I graduated from Tower Hill as well, as well as our son-in-law, Mark Smolka, our daughter Jennifer attended Tower Hill from PK through 8th grade, and our daughter Lindsay graduated from Tower Hill and taught kindergarten and first grade before I moved to San Francisco. Our loss. San Francisco's gain. And we are not done since two of our grandchildren, Allie and Ben Smoko, are flourishing here. Alex has also been fortunate to be witness to the outstanding work of former headmasters Brooke Stabler, Malcolm Coates, Tim Golding, and now Bessie Spears, head of school. Lastly, he wanted to mention some past outstanding members of the faculty, Cecil Buckle, seventh grade English, OKB, and Pooh Store, who in an informal poll of alums was by far rated their favorite teacher. Betty Richardson and Bob DeGroat, athletics, Bob Griffin, business manager, Allison McKenna and Kathy Warner in the alumni office, and Harry Bacher, head of upper school and headmaster. Thank you again very much. Go Hillers. Congratulations, Alex and Mona. We're very proud to claim you. And I want to thank our president of our alumni station, association, Ashley Altschuler, who is so loyal and at every Tower Hill event. Thank you, Ashley, and the Alumni Council for the work that you do all year long. I also would like to thank Mr. Matt Twyman, who is our alumni director and who arranged this whole event. Thank you, Matt. I just uh, came from field hockey and soccer, and we were uh, winning field hockey, I think, up 4 1, and um, are in the last 10 minutes of soccer and down one, and then cross country is at 2 o'clock, so um, stay tuned. And uh, I figured um, there's one person on the stage who can relate, who, if you compared footwear, um, you can tell who's been ahead of school, who is ahead of school, because Tim Golding has his running shoes on and I have my flip-flops on, so we can get around quickly to everything <laughs> wonderful that's happening. Um, so uh, I also wanted to mention that we have alumni back from around the world, including Israel and Switzerland, which I just learned. And um, so we, I think, probably should create the longest traveled award uh, and include that for reunions in the future. So it's just incredible what uh, who has come back and we thank you so much for being part of this. Um, this panel is really the, the main event here, so I'm going to fly through these slides since you've had enough of me with those of you who uh, came to convocation. But I did want to give you a sense of, um, of the heart and soul of Tower Hill, which is the teachers and really uh, what we've been working on and where we're headed. And my own philosophy is um, really that a school like Tower Hill is great bones, for 100 years great bones. And it really is all based on the investment and, and in our teachers, our people, programs, and partnerships. And um, so, so I'll give you a quick run through. I'm fortunate to work with a really strong board of trustees. Uh, a couple of trustees are in the audience, Ellen Pullman and some others um, who I may not see with the lights here. but. They work very, very hard. They are great stewards and visionaries for, the, for Tower Hill for the next century. Um, our 
strategic planning process was um, a year-long process that included faculty, students, alumni, parents, every, every constituency. It took a year, and um, we really wanted to build a strategic plan that wouldn't sit on a shelf and collect dust. So these were our three pillars of the strategic plan that we felt were really important moving forward on to provide an exhilarating education um, and to, to really invest in faculty and to build an engaged and diverse community. And um, one of the things uh, that we also recognized that we need to do a campus master plan and really look how we're using space and how it really enhances our academic program and our community offerings. So we've completed um, the Lower School Experiential Outdoor Classroom. If you haven't seen that, it is a must-see. There's a mud kitchen, there's a waterfalls, and it's really a classroom that allows for inter interdisciplinary um, teaching and exploration in the lower school. So it is a masterpiece, and it's in full operation. Our dining commons, while well, you may not know it, but if you go out, you can look to the right of the courtyard. We're glassing that in, and that will become a space a community gathering space that we much, we really need because our academic program is right now kind of hand tied by when, how, when we feed people and we want to be able to be more agile than that. So that should be completed this spring and we're excited about the dining commons. Um, so uh, one of the things that we um, implemented, uh, thanks to the teachers and their creativity and Mr. Hain is sitting right out here who he kind of shepherded us along with Tower Term, um, this is an experiential uh, four or five day session at the end of May where teachers are able to teach together. My husband taught a beekeeping class and went to apiaries around uh, the state. Um, and it gives teachers and students a chance to get to know each other beyond the classroom and really engage interdisciplinary uh, in fashion. Um, these are more shots of the experiential outdoor classroom. We cut the ribbon last uh, year on that. As I said, the dining commons will look like this once the steel beams get put in place and the glass goes over uh, the roof. I, I want to make have you not walk out of here um, confused uh, at, on one thing in particular. While this may be steel beams and glass, facilities don't make a school. It is really an investment in people and programs and partnerships as a school of Wilmington in the world. And so um, the experiential classroom, for instance, was a dream that the lower school faculty has had for, for over 10 years. And now it is a reality. Um, and, and the same with um, the Learning Commons, which is now just a dream, but in order to um, enhance our library and learning spaces in a way that matches how students learn today in collaborative fashion, um, we are hoping to, uh, to vision out a Learning Commons um, as I said, investing in faculty is the number one priority uh, for us. We have accomplished uh, a number of different things here that, that um, have been very important um, and, and we'll continue to push ourselves in this, in this regard. Um, when, when I arrived, we, we, um, we, weren't funding to this, we weren't funding advanced degree work and um, we said a school like Tower Hill needs to uh, really invest in its faculty. So we invest, we, we fund 50% of advanced degree work. I'd love that to be 100%. Um, Tower Hill teachers deserve that, and, uh, and they, they deserve to be honored and have faculty chairs and that, like, at 100 years, we, we want to be bold and, and increase our investment that way. Our institutional goals each year are the faculty and my team um, sit together and really talk about how we want to paddle in the same direction um, and this year we have three institutional goals really to, to um, weave in environmental stewardship and really look at that and challenge ourselves um, as to how we can weave that through and really um, do, do more in that regard. So, um, and, and also celebrate community, obviously the centennial and really a growth mindset that we're asking students to walk through, through these doors every day and stretch themselves and as a faculty and staff we want to do the same thing and we want to be continuing to learn. Um, best practices and common language around a student-centered approach to teaching and learning doesn't mean it's a free-for-all, doesn't mean students get to decide everything, um, but we do want the eight steps that they walk up into this building each year, each day. Uh, after they hit that eighth step, we want them to say, you know what, I'm an architect too of my education. Um, what I think matters. I have opinions and I want to learn how to share them in appropriate venues. We have community conversations in the upper school here in this space. 
so that uh, students can talk about real world events and, and share their opinions and, and uh, disagree or ask questions respectfully. And um, this is also a commitment. Uh, we, we, we have a commitment to philanthropy at 100 years. It's certainly time to wrap our arms around the school um, in the traditional sense of philanthropy. But really what we're trying to do through a robust commitment to service learning and character development is help our students understand what giving truly means. Giving of yourself, of your time, of your talent. Um, being vulnerable, being, being able to say, you know what, um, I need to go to the Teaching and Learning Center or I want to go to the Wellness Center and uh, learn more or help someone. Um, so this, this is not a new concept for Cap Tower Hill, it's baked into our mission and we want to celebrate it. Um, our enrollment is very, very healthy thanks to our admissions team and really, the, again, the daily mission which our teachers deliver every day. Uh, not all schools are fortunate enough right now to be in this, um, this position. So um, our, our uh, admissions numbers are up, our attrition numbers are down. And uh, this is all bodes very well for the future in what is a uh, challenging time for independent schools in this region. Um, our annual fund hit $1 million. Uh, our increase in leadership donors and uh, the, the kind of building a culture of philanthropy is, is certainly um, thanks to you and others who are spreading the word. And um, one of the things we also invested in before a strategic plan was um, some real hard data research. And we hired a firm out of Baltimore who really uh, go around the country doing data research, um, market research for universities and schools. And they really help you to understand your opportunities, areas you're doing well. And so this is an executive summary of, of research that they came back and did five years later. And um, we're delighted with the progress uh, that we are making um, and, and you know, in terms of increased satisfaction, uh, curricular innovation seems to be something, something very important. No surprise, our parents are living in the real world and they understand what the skills are that students are going to need uh, going forward. So this is some very good progress. The faculty just saw this um, earlier in the fall and uh, it's nice um, to share it out because they are the ones who really deserve all the credit. Um, this is part of that research. It will show you that um, that these areas are, are statistically significant, that um, athletics, challenging academics, best academics in the area, character development, um, and exceptional teachers. Uh, this is comparing, uh, comparing the 2016 research to the 2019 research. So you can see there are significant um, increase in satisfaction among these particular aspects um, that are important to our parents and our, and our community. And um, at this point, I would like to turn it over to Ellis Watson, who I thank for doing double and triple duty. He's written the Tower Hill 100 book along with Harry Bacher. He's spoken last night to dedicate that book, and here he is again. And thank you, panelists, for, for honoring us with your presence, and we can't wait to hear what you have to say about past, present, and future. Thank you very much. The mic working? Is that, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Um, first of all, I should mention that uh, if you came to see Mary uh, Hobbs Taylor, uh, who was listed as a panelist, she uh, has had to uh, withdraw. She's not feeling well uh, and uh, could not appear this afternoon. Um, she has been absolutely crucial in the whole centennial celebration, and I know she really uh, is upset missing this event, so uh, we sent her our best. Uh, but uh, Matt has put together a really excellent panel, and our job is in, in particular to address the issues of creativity and innovation, but also simply uh, perhaps reminiscent about the school historically. If we have any time at the end, uh, maybe some other people in the audience would like to share some of their <laughs> memories as well. But what I'm going to do is ask the members of the panel first just to introduce themselves, um, and say a little bit about what they did after graduation, and then I'll come back and ask you more specific questions. So. This is work? <laughs> okay, great, thank you. I am Louise, other, otherwise known as Phoebe Schoonover Smith. Uh, we have a long connection with Tower Hill, but I am totally jealous. I have no little pillars in my family. <laughs> <laughs> because we have lived in many places, none of which are Wilmington. 
Uh, I left Tower Hill after having been here two years and was so influenced that in retrospect, I can hardly believe it. Uh, when you, I don't know how old some of you are, and when you even know these names, but we went to a dinner last night because I'm the class of 59, very young. Uh, but we have an interview with all of the, not all, but many of the members of our class. And I said, well, how did Tower Hill affect you? And I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I'm sorry. Um, and they mentioned names like Oviat, mm. yes, Coates, Hutt, Algard, and Savage. And those teachers, so what Bessie said is absolutely true. The teachers were what influenced us so much. I came from, I'm sorry, below the canal. Um, and that was not a good place to come from, I will tell you. Uh, but I managed for two years, 11th and 12th grade, went on to Connecticut College for Women and the University of Delaware, uh, raised a family, lived in, in uh, various places. So 10 years raising a family, 10 years teaching school after I became double certified to teach history, right? history, K-12, and uh, elementary school. And then uh, we came to Wilmington. Uh, by that time, the children were gone, no Hillers. And we formed a nonprofit corporation because my connection with Tower Hill uh, one of them is that my grandfather, Frank Schoonover, was an artist. He was an illustrator. And if you remember, through all your years, you were surrounded by Frank Schoonover's Joan of Arc paintings. And that's my grandfather. And that's one of our, our uh, connections. My father and, and his sister were among the first graduates of Tower Hill as well. So, uh, and I will have to admit my brothers went to St. Andrews. Sorry. Uh, so anyhow, we formed a nonprofit. Uh, profit Corporation. We did the catalog raisonne, which you see, the two volume catalog raisonne, which you see up in the hallway, and uh, are now doing another book about my grandfather, Frank Scudover, about his photography, which is nigh unto amazing. So that's kind of where we come from. And what else would you like that's to great. That's Thank fine. you. I'm sorry if I took too long, but. That's fine. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Thank you. That's great. Can everybody hear me? Okay, great. My name is Janelle Trader. I graduated from Tower Hill in 1970, started in 1966 as a freshman. Um, I was, when I first started, I was the only African American in the school. I don't even remember any other people of color, really. So, um, so it was, in, it was was a rewarding experience. It changed my path of life, um, but there, you know, definitely were some challenges. When I left um, Tower Hill, I did my undergraduate work at Tufts University. Uh, went off and, you know, worked for IBM and Wang Laboratories. I don't know if you remember that company. Became a software engineer, designing software. They figured out I was good in marketing and those kind of things. So I. Went back to business school, uh, MIT, Sloan School of Management. When I graduated from there, I headed up to uh, Silicon Valley and worked for Sun Microsystems. Um, rose through the ranks and um, became you know, head of their workstation product group line. So um, I definitely attribute a lot of that um, foundation, a lot of that possibility to the education. I got at Tower Hill that set the stage for me. Um, it made me think, you know, of things that I didn't believe were possible before for me. So I do believe, I definitely believe in my heart this education was worthwhile. Um, what I do right now, should I talk about that now? Okay, I am, I left Silicon Valley in 2001. That was the big technology bust. Um, moved to DC. A friend said, what you want to do now? You're way too young to retire. So um, I said, well, maybe. I don't know. She said, well, I'm an executive coach. I'll help you figure it out. And she did. In six months, I knew I wanted to be an executive <laughs> coach because I knew how tough it was for women and people of color in that corporate world, especially Silicon Valley. You think it's bad now. It was something else when I was there. So um, that's what I did. I became an executive coach. Now I work with 
other leaders and organizations to help them be more effective. Um, my passion really is working with uh, women leaders and women and people of color because of the, the special perspective I bring and uh, the special understanding I bring having been there myself. So that's what I do um, now. And um, I don't know, it's, it's rewarding work for me. Yeah. Chuck? I'm Chuck Durante, class of 1969. Every generation has a feeling that it was pivotal. And mine, ours, can feel that way. After all, we had the Beatles and their progeny. We had soul music and the civil rights struggle. We had Frank Sinatra with Nelson Riddle's arrangements, and we had Joni Mitchell when she could hit above high C. <laughs> it was a very special time. What was unique, I think, about that era, which spoke uh, not just to the leaders of the time, but the spirit of the school over 10 decades is how our mentors from Malcolm Coates through the faculty helped us through the two brimming issues of the time. We had a mercurial English teacher, Bob Bear, who got started a program, the Tudor Corps, on Tuesdays and Wednesday nights. Students with four and five course loads would block out their evening, go down to an abandoned Presbyterian church at 4th and Rodney to tutor elementary school kids or just to talk to them. Picture, if you will, one third, this is after the 68 riots, one third of this student body signing up for and carrying through a full year for that unique project. As Janelle pointed out, these were students who grew up in a segregated society, particularly here, but who wanted to educate themselves, do what they could do to make this a better community, and receive the accommodation of our academic leaders. In connection with the war, you think things are polarized now? Well, you have an idea of what it was like then. Mr. Coates brought in a State Department official who was actually a classmate of his in the 40s who gave us the State Department point of view without patronizing us. There were also chapel speakers who spoke against the war, including the Bishop of Delaware. In uh, April of 1968, one of Janelle's classmates asked the boss, can we put out a table essentially a teaching table in the upper school hallway. He said, yes, as long as you don't interfere with uh, the traffic and uh, that you adhere to your academic uh, responsibilities. My goodness, on uh, final uh, Friday of uh, April 1968, uh, wouldn't you know that uh, there were discussions among people who six months earlier, previous would have been shouting at each other, talking about these issues. The fact that uh, Graham Loudon, class of 1960, had died uh, summer before was a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. And people um, who were raised in households that were dedicated to the eradication, whose dads fought to eradicate totalitarianism, who knew the viciousness of communism, were doubting the strategic validity of foreign policy at a fairly sophisticated level at a young age. The school managed that, and the theme to be derived from that snapshot to now our 11th decade is that one undeniable commonality through the great years, the lean years, and all the in-between years is that we have had a faculty of uncommon dedication, people who combine blue collar work ethic with an elite dedication to academic excellence and personal integrity. <coughs> These folks could 
Had they chosen a different line of work, been able to buy and sell a lot of us, instead they chose to make us better people. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Byrne. I'm class of 1974. Uh, I was very active in uh, theater here in the, what they call the 1919 auditorium. Now we had nothing like this, but, but we still had a really, really rich experience. Uh, I left here and went to Boston University as part of their theater conservatory program, uh, but my parents being my parents, uh, Dick and B. Byrne, who were here forever, uh, they, uh, they insisted that I get a liberal arts education as well. So in addition to a conservatory program, I was taking all kinds of uh, additional credits, way more than, than I probably should have, uh, but I was prepared. And the thing is, you know, a fish doesn't know it's in water, and when I got to college, I realized how capable I was because of the teaching I'd gotten here to handle all of the pressures, all of the different things, plus being in a program that was, I was ex exceedingly happy there, but I was so prepared from here. A um, couple of things that I was remembering, I got a chance last night to talk to John Lovell, who was our English teacher who came back, who I haven't seen in 45 years, but who I think of constantly because he has been one of the people who propelled my love of Shakespeare, who propelled my ability to analyze text, and I no longer, well, I, I left here, I went to BU, I went to Arena Stage in Washington, I came to New York to be in the theater, and I ended up in the toy business. Um, <laughs> and that has been a tremendous gift. Uh, I've written a bunch of books, I consult, uh, I do idiotic things on TV that make people laugh. Uh, I have a wonderful time. I get to talk to kids. Uh, I get to pass on a lot of, of what I learned here. Uh, I spent uh, a year and a half with a, with a little game that was found in uh, Washington called Pictionary. Uh, I spent a year and a half launching that, uh, and I've been on my own. But I've never given up my love of the theater for the past 23 years. I've been a theater critic, member of the Drama Desk, and a major playwright has just uh, uh, named me his biographer. And so that book's coming out in 2021, so I'm very excited about that. But, you know, as I've been thinking about being here, it all comes back to being here to being able to do the work. And if you talk about creativity and innovation, you can't be creative or innovative without a solid foundation under you, which means knowing perspective, education, broad, you know, broad knowledge. And I'm very happy, I talked to a lot of educators to see that there's a glimmer, a glimmer that the liberal arts are coming back into fashion. And <laughs> just a glimmer. <laughs> But it is such an important thing to be a well-rounded person, to, to have, be curious about so many things. And, and the last thing I'll say is, I was a very indifferent geometry student. And that's, that's probably the, the kindest thing I can say about that. But I remember Mrs. Kelly. And she used to say, let's close our books and reason together. And I go back to that all the time as one of the greatest gifts I got from Tower Hill. Because after you have all this information, You've got to figure out how to use it. So I'm just so grateful to be back here. And it's, it's been such a gift. So thank you. <laughs> is, is there a pattern of flexibility developed here? Kate. Hi, everyone. I'm Kate LeMay, uh, class of 97. I attended Tower Hill from pre-kindergarten through ninth grade, and then I also went to Choate, like Alex Weiss, so there must be a Tower Hill Choate connection. Um, uh, but then I went on to Syracuse University and then Indiana University, where I earned a PhD. It's a dual PhD in American Studies and Art History. Um, and taught a couple of years that, uh, as one does in academia these days, it's really difficult to land in one job and stay, so I moved around. And finally, um, I'm now a curator and historian at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery in Washington. And I curated an exhibition that's currently on view about women's suffrage to commemorate the centenary uh, anniversary of the 19th Amendment's ratification. So you, can you not hear me? No, we cannot hear you. Yeah, it doesn't sound like your mic is working. Is my mic not working? Work on Kate's mic. Should I keep talking? Should I pick up the one that's over here? <laughs> is that better? That's not mm -hmm. sure. Do I need to start over again? <laughs> 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 
I don't want to repeat if it's um, a lot of information, but I was just saying that I'm a curator at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, where I curated an exhibition on women's suffrage, uh, and upstairs is a catalog. Um, I, you know, the things from Tower Hill that I think that are really important for me is that it wasn't easy. It was not an easy academic experience, and I think we can probably all agree what um, good, hard challenges uh, serve us, how they serve us later in life. You learn how to work hard, and there's that satisfaction of uh, completing a, a project and doing it well. And the motto of Tower Hill, many things done well, those foundational blocks that you get as a student will serve you know, for the rest of your life. And when I do a project that's huge, like putting on an exhibition, um, I crisscross the country and search in all these different collections uh, looking for the exact objects that I needed to tell this very long history of American women's suffrage movement. That, um, you know, if you think about it, how, how overwhelming that really is, that kind of project. And the, the book will show you how many um, different objects there are, each of their own story. I don't think I could have done it, honestly, if I didn't have grit and uh, some really good foundational blocks about critical thinking. I love to write, and my teachers at Tower Hill were great encouragers. Um, I think I saw Jack Smith here earlier, and he was my math teacher. <laughs> And I was not a good math student at all, um, but he, you know, he would always applaud me for my effort. So there's something I, I think that's really nourishing and encouraging about a school like Tower Hill um, that, you, that you know stays with you throughout all these big endeavors that you might go on to to try to tackle later in life. So thank you. This is a, a, an important weekend for our family. Uh, I think back, I was here from 1986 to 2005, uh, 19 years, and during that period of time we celebrated the school's 75th anniversary. We buried a time capsule that was the same year my daughter was back for her 25th reunion, um, graduated from Tower Hill. Um, when I think back on the 19 years I spent here, I go back to something that was part of my philosophy of education, and I developed that very early along because I was in education till I retired in 2013 for 44 years. Uh, head of two schools, this one and Worcester School in Danbury, Connecticut, for a total of 25 years. So I had an awful lot of time to do one most important job and it never ever became any other job but this one and that was hiring great <laughs> faculty when i went to st albans school in 19 graduated in 65 in washington i can remember i remember to this day i had my 50th reunion not so long ago i remember giants at st albans giants in the terms of faculty Teachers that, I mean, just made me work forever. Pe teachers that were extraordinary in, 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 as people. And St. Albans developed an illustrated history. And in that illustrated history, there was a quote that came a part of my philosophy of education and guided me in running Tower Hill, Worcester, etc. That quote was as follows. Great schools are benevolent asylums <laughs> where personalities are allowed to loom. <laughs> In my experience, the great teachers, and we have wonderful evidence of that as a result of the newly um, done book by Ellis and Harry, which I spent a lot of time with last night, there have been extraordinary looming personalities at Tower Hill over the entire 100-year span of this institution. I was lucky enough to witness 19 years of it. 
And this morning, I was delighted to be able to award uh, a faculty member I hired, Colleen Hubler, with the English uh, Award. Happy to have seen Michelle Coulter win the Kitchell Award. She started, and Sandy Wang, our head of lower school at the time, we, we hired her as a pre-K uh, teacher. And Michelle has run the table. She's been a first grade teacher. She's been in admissions. I think she's now back uh, in the classroom. It doesn't matter where you're putting Michelle because she's one of the great ones. And all I can say is, and sitting at the end of this panel, maybe one of the great ones during the time I was here, and that's Dr. Wasson. I must tell you this story. In eight, else when he came here, and we competed with a Midwestern college for his services. He had been at Rivers and he had been at Shadyside, but I was determined after Ed Hughes, another giant in this field, I was determined we had to fill that role with big shoes. And we got Dr. Wasson, and early along, it was interesting to me that he, as a PhD, was interested in dealing with middle school as well as upper school students. Middle schoolers are not necessarily a PhD's cup of tea, but trust me, <laughs> Ellis Watson spent some time with the eighth graders and then again with the sophomores. Billy Repult, a young eighth grader, graduated on into the upper school and as a tenth grader, he was in Dr. Watson's class. And he started coming home and his father, Bill, said, you know, I really, I, I can't understand, Bill, why you are so interested in history. You would have none of it as an eighth grader. He said, Dad, you haven't heard Dr. Watson. <laughs> The reason that we have what is also an innovative and creative program that no other day schools in this vicinity have, the Tower Hill Forum, is because Bill Repolt came in and said to Dr. Wasson, I want to do something to honor your great teaching. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to endow this speaker's series, which began 99, Ellis, 2000, and has gone now for almost two decades, bringing the likes of our former governor, Mike Castle, uh, Danny Glover, Buzz Aldrin, Ely Vizell, George Will. George Will was our first speaker. He came in, and as he's coming in, and he can be arrogant, he said, <laughs> I hope that these, I hope that these uh, students will get what I have to say. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this. This is a little uh, more than I can handle. But we, I let it go, we came, and then we had a question and answer after he was finished. And one of the seniors asked him a question. George did not answer the question. The senior raised his hand again and asked the question a different way. And as we left, after that session was over, George Will said to me, you know, those kids are pretty sharp. <laughs> All I'm telling you is that all of this starts with great teaching, and we have been blessed with some of the very best. We don't have a lot of time left, but uh, maybe I could go along and just ask you to identify and speak briefly about one teacher or one course or even a friend who stimulated you in some way towards the creativity in your life and work. And in any order, people want to go in. If anybody wants to launch that or start that uh, idea. Janelle? Sure, yeah. I'll start it. Um, you know, there wasn't one individual teacher. I would tell you, though, I really feel the teachers at Tower Hill um, if it wasn't for them creating such a safe environment where I could be myself and share my perspectives, um, I don't feel that I would have been as creative. Um, I never felt I never felt that anything I would I said would be um, downgraded or I'd be judged. And I honestly believe. Um, when it comes to dealing with, well, stimulating creative conversations, 
it's important to be inclusive and set that environment where you feel safe to, to where you feel safe to say what you really believe and to share your perspective. And I will definitely say the Tower Hill teachers did that. Um, I felt very safe saying a lot of things in those classes and being who I was, and that made all the difference in the world. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Chuck? I was admitted on the condition that I'd take a remedial composition course entering ninth grade. <laughs> I left the school a professional writer for most of the last 50 years. <laughs> There, there were so many, there were so many. Mr. Shear, Mr. Mr. Lovell, I mentioned Mr. Dahl, Mr. Bear, um, everybody. But I'm going to tell you a story that I told at my dad's funeral because my father was head of the middle school while I was there. And when I was in fifth grade, we had an English teacher, Mrs. Hall, and several of my friends and I decided we were going to drive her crazy. Um, and she was a lot more resilient than we gave her credit for. But like many faculty would stand in our house and talk to my father, so we weren't far away, though we were out of sight. Um, and Mrs. Hall was standing in the, in the, we lived on 17th Street at the time before we moved into the alumni house, and she's going, Dick, what do those boys think they're doing? And my father very calmly said, they're being 11-year-old boys. <laughs> and the point of that is that no matter where we were, we were seen, and we were understood, and that is probably the most important gift any teacher can give a child, and when I see kids that I work with, uh, young kids who don't have this privilege, the, just seeing them and hearing them is a phenomenal gift, and that's the gift we got every single day here. Kate? Okay. Sure. This is on. Okay. Yeah. I think that um, you know I I love to read when I was a little kid. And there were these advanced reading courses that Tower Hill does, you know, for reading and English and math courses, <laughs> remedial math, um, but that's okay. The reading courses, though, um, were, I just, I, I recall Tower Hill's, the passion that they helped me kind of grow. And I know that sounds a little corny, but it's true. <laughs> so I, I look back on my, my lower school teachers, I see Mrs. Square here, and um, <laughs> it's just neat that, that um, the teachers remain so invested. I'm Facebook friends with Peggy Schultz. I don't know if anyone remembers her. Um, Bill Smith had a big impact on me. Um, the late Bill Smith, who was the head of lower school. Um, I think by his kindness, really, he was such an ex he exemplified um, care and compassion so beautifully. So I think there's a lot of role models um, that, that still remain with me to this day from my teachers. And I have to mention Madame Richardson. I don't she's such a character. And I was a terrible French student, but for some reason, you know, the foundations that I got then blossomed later in life and I got a full right to France and I was able to write a book and, and win these grants back to France um, to study American war cemeteries in France. And all of that comes right back to my foundations. Again, you know, doing this hard work uh, and having these teachers that really knew how to push me and encourage me. So, yeah. do you have? Uh, I do want to just uh, say a real thank you. And I wish they were here to say thank you to Mr. Coates and Mr. Oviet. Because honestly and truly, I came unprepared and they were understanding, but they were demanding. Too bad you went to Middletown High School. You have to write a composition, and it's due Friday, and you better figure it out. And that forced me personally, and everybody else, uh, to perform and to learn. And the vocabulary, please, the vocabulary that we learned, I've used it and used it and used it in writing, writing for magazines, doing our books, we, it's just been a blessing, a blessing in my life. Uh, we did not include headmasters in the book that we produced. Uh, they're such larger than life personalities, perhaps, uh, they wouldn't fit within the coverage easily. Uh, but I want to say to Tim that uh, one of the things that they can do in creating those asylums where personalities can loom is let teachers do their thing. 
and he was superb at doing that. He created an environment where the teachers felt safe to be exotic and, uh, and, and to be creative. Uh, and uh, that I feel enormous gratitude working under him, having that opportunity. Anything that in the audience someone would like to share? If you were dying uh, to say something about a teacher or uh, yes. I'm Dave Kind of class of 70 and a teacher I haven't heard or read much about this weekend is Ollie Drake, sixth grade history. <laughs> Ollie took field trip after field trip after field trip to Gettysburg. A recent trip to Gettysburg, and I didn't remember a whole lot of the specifics, but I remembered a whole lot of the feelings and personalities that helped me put that battle back into a framework. Ollie made history come alive in his own way and with his own passions, and that was important for us too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, Larry Beck, class of uh, 58. We haven't heard much about uh, the arts, and I just want to say that even though I did not become an artist or, or uh, I'm a physician, um, Mr. Bourgeau, mm -hmm. and to a lesser extent, Mr. Carvin, um, <coughs> instilled in all of us a love of music. And uh, I took that to, took that to the Brandywiner, I took the college uh, singing groups, I sing in two choirs now. And that was founded here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> okay. So, Bob Sirius Downey, actually, voted his dinosaur brother, uh, class of 2009. Um, I, there was a time that I wasn't Use the best the student here. I, I, my, Use I, the mic. I, 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 uh, <laughs> being, I fell behind sometimes, and my teachers would never, they I'd skate by, my teachers would never let that. Like they would they cared so much and believed so much in me that they always forced me to push myself harder and whether it was in sports, arts, whatever it was. Um, and just honestly now as I got to college and finally found my rhythm and got off into grad school, it's what pushed me to finally get into med school and now follow my sister and my parents' footsteps. So it's really the foundations and, and how much my teachers cared about me and how much my teachers really pushed me and no matter what you can always do better, you can always push yourself, and that was what I learned here, so. I thank you guys all for that, especially. I mean, Dr. Ross and I, I, I never had the pleasure of taking your class, but even just passing by each other in the hallways, and uh, you'd always remember me and say hi to me no matter what, and it, it just, it's the little things that really went a long way. So, I'm sure I speak for my sister as well, she spoke um, earlier that we are eternally grateful for the education that we received here. So, Takes a village. <laughs> Ellis? Yes, Tip. Uh, you uh, just hit on, on an extremely important point. A number of students, as they graduate from Tower Hill, um, if you're fortunate enough to um, hear this, they'll say, you know, I just really loved uh, so-and-so's class, or I really can't tell you how valuable this experience was. I try, as a head of school, to turn that question back to them to say, have you told them? Have you actually related to them. It doesn't matter whether it's five years or 10 years. Those comments, those notes, those letters are like incredible statements and make a faculty member's day, year, month, lifetime. So don't be shy if you have those <laughs> joyful moments. <laughs> don't be shy, share them with the person who's responsible for them. Thank you, and on that point, I think we have to end because of time, but uh, thank you for your engagement and interest, and this panel has just been great. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Great. So we can just give the panel just one more round of applause. today. Um, give them thanks. Again, my name is Max Wyman. I'm um, class of 1988. I'm a lifer. Um, <laughs> I like to echo all the things that I heard up here. And, and if I could share just one story. I mean, when I was here, 
I was not necessarily where I thought the sharpest knife in the drawer. Um, <laughs> but when I went on to college, um, because of the teachers I had, there were some what I call the pillars. Mr. Hughes, Mr. Savage, Mr. Bajer, um, to go in was, was, our, was our head of school. Um, I went on, I, I left here, I walked on to the college, uh, University of Pittsburgh track, track team. I was tutoring kids in math, um, which I'm sure Mr. Smith would find hard to believe. Um, I was holding out a part-time job as well. I was in the acting club, um, and I was also the, the head of my, my floor. I was at what they call a dorm leader. Um, and that's what I thought every kid did. But it was the preparation and the experience and things that I had here that allowed that to happen. So like Mr. Gordon said, I'd like to say thank you to all those teachers. And I saw a lot of those teachers last night. Um, but again, I think Tower Hill offers a great experience. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come back and be a part of this group. But once again, thank you to the panel. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the centennial festivities. I hope to see many of you at the gala tonight uh, where we can cover up and have some fun. Kick off 3 o'clock for the football team, go green. Um, everyone have fun. Thank you for coming.